It sounds like a hot mess. So the kid is my biological son, but I haven't been allowed in his life or recognised as a father. After a pretty messed up night of getting in a heated argument with my brother, this happened. Most of the night was a blur, we drank too much, but his wife and I slept together. We realised how badly we messed up in the morning and agreed it would never happen again. My brother and I became estranged for a while because it was too weird to be around each other. They later announced being pregnant, but I thought I was safe because she took a plan B the morning after it happened just in case. After the baby was born, I was getting doubts though and really wanted to know for sure he wasn't mine. My brother eventually agreed to a paternity test and that said, I'm the father. I've wanted to be in my son's life, but they won't let me. My family was on his side about it and told me to stop being selfish because, on paper, this is his child, since they're married, and if I'm around it's going to complicate their marriage even more. The whole time I tried to convince them, my parents would say I'm a horrible younger brother. He felt that way too when I'd ask if I could at least come over to maybe play with him for a little bit. So about two months ago, I gave up, but kept my distance from them because it hurts too much. He's ten months old, I still haven't gotten to hold him. But now, because my brother's mother-in-law got into an accident, they want me to watch him for a few days. My brother is flying with his wife to see her mom because he has to help out. Our parents right now are in the UK for a couple of months. They can't bring him because they're worried he might get sick if they take him to an airport. My brother says it's only three days. If there was anyone else that could watch him, then he'd ask, but he needs help. I told him no because he's fine with me being a sitter when it's at their convenience, but I'm not allowed to be a dad to my son. Then it might also hurt a lot more to actually spend time with him, then have to give him back and not be allowed to see him anymore. We started arguing and we were yelling at each other. My brother told me to grow up and stop being petty about what happened, even more now that there's an actual emergency and they need someone's help. I do feel bad because I get it's a serious issue happening with her mom, so they need to be there. At the same time, I'm still mad about what they did, so I don't know if that's just being petty or not. Am I the idiot? Jesus. Listen, OP, we all read some messed up stuff, and absolutely every single one has an opinion. This one, though, I think is a collective, what the heck? For future reference, though, Plan B will not always work, as you know by now, so don't ever sleep with any other woman married to your family members. Yeah, that sounds a lot like the my brother and his wife used me years ago when I needed money and now she has my kids story. After you watch him for three days, then what? They rip him from your arms again? They're lucky you haven't sued for visitation. Not the idiot, OP. I think it's unfair of them to ask you to babysit when they clearly know that you want and have an emotional attachment. I'm sorry you're in this position. After reading this story, I don't think you're the idiot here. They seem to want to flip-flop on their stance when it suits them best, but guaranteed when they get back, it'll go back to how it was before. As the bio father, and considering the situation, you can fight for your rights if you want. It'll be a battle, but you didn't know the baby was 100% yours until after he was born. You do have rights. Everyone's the idiot here for creating this situation in the first place. So either suck it up and let your brother be the kid's father and stop fighting it or go to a lawyer and get your parental rights established and prepare to be estranged from your family. But stop whining about not getting to be the kid's father and uncle at the same time in only the ways you want and think about what's best for this poor baby boy. Update. Am I the idiot for refusing to babysit my biological son because of a family emergency on his mother's side? I know there were a lot of mixed opinions about this, but it still helped a lot to hear feedback from others about this. I get it's an extremely weird situation, and people had their things to say about it. I still want to thank those who genuinely wanted to help and for your honest judgement. In the end, I did change my mind about watching my son. Honestly, it was one of the most challenging days at first. It took a while to get in tune with his routine. The first couple of nights he was fussy because I was a stranger to him, Little by little he warmed up. He's gotten so big it totally blew my mind getting the chance to hold him. Finally, it meant everything. It was very emotional for me. Their trip ended up being longer than the three days they anticipated. They'd been gone for over a week, which was great because I spent so many more days with my son, and it was just amazing. They barely got back yesterday in the evening. Saying goodbyes was as hard as I was scared it was going to be. It tore me up. Last night I barely slept just how much it hurt not to be around him. My brother and I talked this morning. 
to ask him again if it would ever be possible for them to let me be in my son's life as his dad. I was trying to have a heart-to-heart conversation because I wasn't trying to take him away from them, but I wanted to be able to spend time with him, maybe have some sort of shared custody, not right away, obviously, because he's still a baby, but after spending more time establishing a relationship with him, and he's older, then discuss more custody time. He was still against that, so I guess there's my answer for this. My sister-in-law called me earlier to say thank you for watching him. She's sorry because she understands how badly I want to be in my son's life, but my brother just doesn't want that and she has to be on his side about this. I've taken a lot of time thinking about this and decided I'm going to fight for my right as his father. I've had one consult so far with an attorney. This one was much more helpful than the last time I tried talking to one about this. While he doesn't guarantee I'll get anything more than visitation, there's a chance I'll be able to establish paternity through the court. However, he wanted me to know that it would be an uphill battle, so to be ready for that. And honestly, I am. It's a crappy situation. I just want to be in my son's life as his father and not anything less. Therapy's been on my mind more recently. I'll start doing more research soon to find someone. Thank you. It's sweet you got time with the little guy and I hope you get what you want from the legal battle. I think your brother and your family are very selfish, especially because your brother agreed to the test. If he didn't want to share the baby, he could have refused outright and let you be an uncle. I understand that your sister-in-law feels she has to be on her husband's side. I think it's cruel of your brother. Also, it's easier to have the kid grow up with this knowledge than him finding it out later on. That's just asking for drama. This situation is so strange that I wonder if OP's brother had fertility issues, and so they got OP high and devised this plan to have a baby together. I have to agree with you. This situation appears planned out by brother and his wife but I am glad OP was able to spend time with his son. Good luck going forward. It's going to be a hard battle. I wish you the best. You have every right to see your son. My 26 male best friends are getting married this summer. Since high school, Aaron and Kelsey have been my two best friends and have always been the centre of our friend group. Kelsey's best friend is Grace, and she's the bridesmaid I've been paired with. We all hang out in a larger friend group of about 10. Most of us have been friends since high school, Grace included. Well, Grace and I have never gotten along. It all goes back to growing up. I'm a ginger and Grace has always been the meanest to me about it. Since we were kids, the joke started. She would pretend like my hair burned her, saying I didn't have a soul. You name it, she did it. She kept it up through high school. Unfortunately, we attended the same college. And while there, she let up a little, mainly because I wasn't around her often. But whenever we did run into each other, the jokes would start. I had a couple of girlfriends in college, and whenever she got to meet them, she would roast me in front of them the whole time and would ask them weird questions. Well, I told her to buzz off, and we haven't really spoken much. We often see each other through Aaron and Kelsey, but I typically give her the silent treatment. The last couple of times, she's tried to engage in a conversation with me, but I told her to save it. So when I saw that I was paired with her, I called up Kelsey. She told me that she and Grace wanted us paired together, and that I needed to get over it and hear Grace out. I told her that wouldn't be happening, and that I'd like a change of bridesmaid. She said, my wedding, my decision. So I called Aaron, and he understood my stance, but said that Kelsey specifically wanted me to walk with Grace. I told him I wasn't about to be the butt of a joke or deal with that woman all day and night being in the wedding party, so I told him just to make me a guest. Aaron got upset and said he talked to Kelsey because he wanted me up there with him. Kelsey's mad that I went behind her back to Aaron. Grace sent me this whole paragraph saying that she understood why I was how I am, but that Kelsey and Aaron are my best friends and I'm hurting them by being like this. I ignored her message and decided to ask, am I the idiot? Firstly, not the idiot. It's wildly unreasonable to expect you to slap on a smile and suck it up while spending nearly two full days with someone who spent a good chunk of your life bullying you. But I get a really odd feeling at part of this. You said you were paired together at the bride and bully's request and the bride isn't willing to budge. It definitely sounds like they're trying to set you up. I'm not really understanding what Kelsey thinks she's doing. Does she want a scene at her wedding? It would be utterly simple just to pair you with another attendant. Also, I don't like how Grace acknowledged your feelings, but then tried to guilt you. The bride and groom aren't cool either for telling you to get over it. You are the idiot. I get that it's awful to be bullied in school, especially if it's by someone in your friend group. But the thing is that bullies in school often grow up. Not all of them, but some do. 
She sounds like she might actually be sorry for how she's been in the past. Perhaps she didn't think she was upsetting you until you blew up in front of her. Maybe that was the eye-opener to her behaviour, but until now you've never allowed the opportunity for her to make amends. All you're doing here is hurting your friends to avoid someone you could just ignore for one night. Why is this his fault? It's not. Grace is the one insisting on being paired with him. It wasn't necessary. OP doesn't owe Grace a chance to make amends. No one owes their bully anything. He's not being mean to her. He simply refuses to walk with her, which is his right. Whatever her motivation, whether a crush or a weird obsession, doesn't matter. OP owes her nothing and shouldn't have to walk with her, period. I, male 29, have a 10-month-old baby. Everyone in my family knows me and my wife are both new parents, so we're a bit overprotective. Last week, I had to go to my brother's wedding without my wife since she was a bridesmaid at another wedding. So I had to fly with my son alone and it was really stressful. I was already on edge and my brother and sister-in-law knew this. My brother was very happy that I brought my son, but my sister-in-law wasn't. She was extremely hostile towards me. So she basically made it a point that she's not going to serve my son food. That was fine with me, so I made plans to bring my own food. When I told her I'd be bringing food, she said I'd need to feed him outside the reception hall. This wasn't an issue. I thought it was weird, but it's fine. So during the ceremony, he got a little fussy. So I took him out to change him. I ended up missing part of the wedding ceremony because I forgot the diapers in my rental car. My brother was really understanding, but my sister-in-law again made more snide comments and told me I needed to get my son under control. I then made a sarcastic comment saying, yeah, I'll just tranquilize him next time. She didn't like that joke at all. During the reception, pretty much everyone on my brother's side was coming up to me and trying to meet my baby for the first time. This was the first family gathering I brought my baby to and everyone just wanted to see him. Well, this didn't sit well with my sister-in-law once again. She was mad everyone's attention was on me and not her. Eventually, she came up to me and told me to stop stealing their moment or I could get out. At that point, I was really tired of her BS, so I just left and went back to my hotel. The next day, my mom and dad were furious at me and asked why I'd left. I told them and they still took sister-in-law's side. My brother is now mad at me too. I told them straight up that my sister-in-law is acting like a child and that I can't make my son stop acting like a baby. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. The weirdest part here is why your family would take her side if she literally told you to leave. Assuming you hadn't previously been waving your baby around like the Lion King, the only reasonable response to stop stealing attention or leave is to leave. Also, considering they were included in the people paying attention to the baby, they are actually the idiots here. Now, nah, what really happened was, as the bride walked down the aisle, the lights dimmed, and here comes OP holding his son aloft to Circle of Life and presented him to the couple before taking his seat. I'm getting married in a few months and would love it if this happened with my niece, the only baby attending. I would let your parents know they're siding with someone who made a baby be fed outside of the venue over their grandchild. What is wrong with that woman? OP, you are not the idiot, but please do pray for your brother, who is now married to a monster. I'm so sorry about his future divorce. My friend Taylor, female 27, and I, female 29, have known each other for almost a decade. We're very close and have been talking about moving out together for a few years now. I luckily landed a decent full-time job about a year ago, making 45000 but Taylor works two part-time jobs and only makes about 20000 We both want to live closer to that city, and while I'm okay with not having the most modern-looking place, Taylor is a little pickier than I am. We live in an expensive city on the East Coast, so finding an affordable place to rent is almost impossible unless we look an hour away from the city. Buying a place would be more affordable, so that's what I did. Late last year, I miraculously found a two-bedroom, two-bath, 1,100-square-feet apartment 20 minutes from the city that was selling for a fraction of what other apartments in the area were selling for. The previous owner was a hoarder and died of old age, so his family was just trying to get rid of the place. I bought it as is and spent the last few months cleaning and had to take out another loan for renovations. The place is almost done. It's very modern with new appliances and I'm very excited to move in just in time for summer. The mortgage would come out to be $1,300, not including utilities. Similar apartments in the area rent for $3,000. I asked Taylor if she wanted to be my roommate, and she, of course, said yes. 
She's been having issues with her parents recently, so she's been dying to leave. She told me previously that the most she'd be able to pay for rent was $800. So when we were discussing arrangements, I told her that's how much her rent would be. I'd be paying $500 and utilities. She seemed really surprised by the number, so I asked why. She said that she thought we would be splitting the mortgage payment evenly at $650 and felt that I was overcharging her. I explained that if we were actually renting an apartment in this area, we'd each have to pay around $1,500 and that $800 really wasn't that bad. I pretty much drained my saving account to put down the payment on the place and I have to pay the loan for renovations, which is an additional $200 a month for me, so I would be paying about the same as her in the end. Plus, if anything breaks, I would be responsible for replacing or fixing it. She still agreed to move in with me, but she's been a little cold the last few days. I explained the situation to some mutual friends of ours, and most of them thought that the arrangement was fair, but one of them told me that it wasn't fair of me to be asking Taylor to be paying for more than half of the mortgage payment when she makes half of what I do. Am I the idiot? She thought you were her friend and actually made a business decision, acquired rental property and became her landlord. She's understandably hurt, so no idiots here. But next time say, hey, I had to put down a lot of money to invest in my new rental property, I need to find a tenant who can pay at least $800 in rent to help me replenish my savings. Expectations are everything. If you will make this about cold, hard business decisions, let her know up front. To be honest, this wasn't a business decision, at least not a good one if the goal was to make as much as possible. OP could have found someone who'd pay market value rent or more if she wanted to rebuild her savings faster. It's weird to be hurt that someone offered you a spot in a newly renovated apartment with below market value rent at exactly your stated rental budget and no utility payments to consider. You also have to pay taxes, utilities, strata fees, insurance. There's a reason the market value for renting it is $3,000 and it's not all greedy landlords. She's getting a good deal. But she will resent you every time you do something she can't afford to, every time you order in and she can't. Not the idiot, but talk it out, a lot. Living with her will be very uncomfortable if you don't.